In this section we'll be testing Speedwino's outputs. This section is probably not that useful because you can see the logic level outputs when the LEDs blink on your Speedwino. But if you happen to have the actual hardware off an engine, like injectors and coils, you can run them on the bench as well. Even if you don't have injectors and coils to hook up, but all this is very new to you, you will learn how systems work by watching this video. One of the misconceptions I see by newcomers is they think the Speedwino powers things on a car, when in actual fact everything gets powered by the car and the Speedwino only controls them, usually by grounding their circuits. As an example, we'll look at the wiring diagram for this Protege 1990. The positive of the battery goes through the ignition switch and is connected directly to the coil, but the negative side of the coil is connected to an igniter, which will ground the coil and create a spark when the ECU tells it to fire. Even the injectors are similar. We have positive from the battery, it goes down through the main relay, and when you hit the ignition switch, 12 volts goes through the relay to 0.6, joins 0.6 and powers all these. And then it comes down to these injectors and the negative side of the injector is connected to the ECU and the ECU grounds them to control them. If you go further, you can see all these ground wires. This is to handle the high currents that are going to ground from the ECU. Always remember 12 volts goes directly to the device and the ECU grounds the circuit or uses something else to ground the circuit. If you come to the beginner's guide, you'll notice all these little red positives with black wires back to the Speedwino and that's telling you the Speedwino is grounding things to control them and that all the power is coming from the actual car. Now let's look at coils. There is a smart coil and a dumb coil. This is just terminology we use to differentiate between a coil with a built-in igniter and a coil where you have to supply an igniter. Note the three pins of a smart coil. Positive, negative and another pin for a signal. Note the two pins of a dumb coil. There's a positive and a negative. And an external igniter. And what is an igniter? An igniter switches a high voltage with a low voltage, just like a relay. And in this case it's a 5 volt signal because the mega uses a 0 to 5 volt digital signal and that in turn switches a 12 volt circuit that activates the coil. Igniters are usually just NPN IGBT transistors and can be easily made. To hook up your ignition, go to the wiki, select your board, scroll down to the pin table, and here we have ignition 1 on pin 7, ignition 4 on pin 8, ignition 3 on pin 33, and ignition 2 on 34. On the car you wire the four ignition channels to the configuration you are using. Running a COP smart coil on the bench. Red is 12 volts positive, black is ground and white is a 0 to 5 volts signal from the Speedwino. Dumb coil with igniter running on the bench. 12 volts positive on the red wire, green is in coil negative, black is the ground and white is the 0 to 5 volt trigger signal from the Speedwino. Next we'll cover injectors. There are two types of injectors, low Z and high Z. Again this is terminology we use. A low Z injector is an injector with low resistance and a high Z injector is an injector with high resistance. If we look at this list of injector specs, we'll notice there's a group up here and in the ohms column, this is a bit skewed, you'll notice these are about under 3 ohms. You would term these as low Z injectors. And this group down here you'll see is around 14 ohms. You'll call that a high Z injector. 2.6 ohm, a low Z injector. 14.6 ohm, a high Z injector. Going back to the beginner's guide, there's a note here. High Z injectors, or low Z with resistor. Speedwino is only designed for high Z injectors, which have lower current demand. So if you connect a low Z injector, you add a resistor to reduce its current demand. Basically the tracks on a Speedwino PCB aren't designed to take pairing of low Z injectors because the current demand is so high that it could burn a track. 
The purists will complain that a low Z injector with a resistor won't work properly, but you can take that with a pinch of salt because some manufacturers use low Z injectors with a resistor on their cars as standard. Maybe for racing when you're at the limit of everything you need it precisely controlled. But with a street car you're compensating for that with the fuel table. Now if we look at the wiring of the injector, it's positive 12 volts in and negative to the Speedwino, which will control the grounding and activating the circuit. For injector wiring, we go back to the wiki pin table, which is over here. And you'll notice every pin is doubled up. Like here is injector 3, 1 of 2, and injector 3, 2 of 2. This doubling of the pin increases the current capacity of the circuit, allowing you to run two injectors on one channel. To get the paired pins for injector 1 and 2, just scroll down. And they're down here. A high Z injector directly connected to 12 volts and the Speedwino. Low Z injector with a resistor. Use a suitable resistor or it'll burn out. Next we'll look at idle valves. You can connect idle valves on the bench, but if you can't see the actual valve moving internally, it's not going to show you much. If you want to test an on-off or PWM idle, supply power to it and the wire goes back to the Speedwino. If you've got an idle stepper, there'll be a group of four wires back to the Speedwino. Back to the pinout. Down here is the PWM and on-off. This is three wire idle valves. And these are the four wires for stepper type idle valves. For more idle information, go to the main page, hit configuration index, hit idle, and idle valves are covered here. And next we have auxiliary outputs. There's medium current and low current. With medium current you can directly ground devices through the Speedwino but only if they're not high amp. There are some examples here below. And the low current output ones which can control circuits only if they're very low amps. Example attack output. It's basically signal level outputs that switch other things. To learn more about it for your board, go to your board. And here in the board features, four medium current spare outputs with examples, and five unpopulated low current spare outputs in the proto area. If you go to the main page, go to hardware, go to auxiliary outputs, and here it explains the low current ones and the medium current ones and their configurations. Some of the low current ones aren't finished yet. Most of the medium ones are. To find your pins on the board, go to your board again in the wiki. Scroll down. And down here is a table of what they are and the pins for the medium current outputs. But if you want the low current pins, that's a bit complicated because you have to use the proto area which you kind of have to chase on the schematic. Here's the schematics. You can see these pins here are outputting out to the proto area. You put your circuit in here and then you connect its outputs to these and it goes to these pins out here. And if you go back to the list here, the proto area pins. And that about covers it for all the outputs.